show you what version two looks like. Right, this is what all members are used to seeing, which now that we've been going for the past couple weeks into version three, it's like, whoa, look at that. That's so different than what we're used to. So this is the current version that, um, well, unless you've enrolled into boot camp or a beta tester, this is the version that you're using. And we're going to begin the rollout and the transition to version three um, early in September, September 9th, actually. Uh, so we'll begin the rollout and we'll have a first batch of members that will um, convert over or be eligible to convert over to version three. And then a few weeks after that, we'll do another batch, a couple weeks after that, another batch. So we're going to kind of transition it in stages. But this is version two that we're seeing. And what I'm going to be talking about in the first half of today's training is um, the new feature for email tracking that um, allows you to track things like um, open uh, rates, click-through rates, um, gives you some reports on unsubscribes, bounce backs, things like that. So I'm going to walk you through that in the first half of today's training. Again, that is only in version three. So if you leave today's training and you're still in version two and you're scratching your head, you're like, I don't know where that thing is Mona was talking about. It's because it's you've got to convert which will happen in September. So I'm just giving you a little heads up to kind of get your feet wet and help you understand what's going to go on so you can feel confident about making that um, transition here in a, a couple weeks. So let's go take a look. And then in the second half of the training, um, we're here to answer whatever questions you have about your console system, about any feature, whether it's today's topic or not. It's just open Q&A time. And I'm here to answer um, those questions for you so we can open that up a little bit later. Let's go take a look at the new feature. Okay, version three. So the email tracking, there's a, a couple of ways that you can do the email tracking. There's actually one way um, that it, it kind of exists in version two. Uh, so I wanna show you that and then I wanna show you a new report that gives you kind of an overview. Um, so what exists right now in version two, let me go back there. In version two, for every one of your contacts, when you click on that Clients tab, here's all your active clients. We'll click on a client, for example. Every contact has what's called a communication log. So if you wonder, wow, did that person receive that email? Did they get that autoresponder? Did they get my invoice? Like if you ever wonder if somebody received something in the current version today that you all have been using all this time, you can go into the communication log. It looks something like this. And you can choose, you know, different communication types. Maybe it's an email message that you're wondering about. Um, maybe it's an invoice that was sent. And you can do a time frame. You know, when was it sent? And when you do the filter, you'll see, okay, this person uh, in the last 30 days has received an autoresponder from me. And currently in version two, what you're able to know and what you're able to track is that this was successfully sent from your console system. And in version two, that's as far as the tracking went. If it's on this screen, you know, yep, it was sent. Now, if, you're, if your client or your contact says, gosh, I did not get it, then something on their end, a, a firewall, a spam filter, settings on their junk folders, um, things like that will um, stop it from coming into their inbox. So in version two, you could confirm, okay, it was sent. And you could even preview what is the message that was sent to them, the date and time and all that. And so that's what exists right now in version two. Now I want to go into version three and show you what this is, because this is still going to exist in version three, and we've added a little tweak to it, okay? All right, in version three, one of the things that we did, um, let's go over there. Here we go. So we're in version three. And again, like the last couple of weeks, I'm going to be going back and forth, clicking from version two and then showing you what it looks like in version three. My excitement gets the best of me because I can't wait for everybody to get converted over to version three. If, um, if I start clicking back and forth too quickly, please type in the webinar box for those that are on the webinar live with me. Let me know. Say, hold on, sister. Slow down. Right? Um, and just kind of let me let me know because I don't I'll go I'll get click happy. Um, okay, so this is version three, and one of the things that we've added 
just a little tweak. You can still click on contacts. Remember, that's where all of our contacts exist. You click on contacts. I'm going to click on active and I'm going to go to that same client because I'm looking at the same account in version two and in version three. So here's our good friend, Helen Ramsey. Now, one of the things that we did, we renamed it. Communication log, that was just too long of a label. The word communication is way too long for any label. So we changed it to email log. And the word email log, that phrase, um, it's the same exact thing as what was called communication log in your current version. So click on email log, same kind of thing. You can choose your different communication types, different time frames, and you can see. Um, Here's the different things that have been sent to this contact. And you can see different messages, different types of messages, the date and time it was sent. But let me show you this. This is the new thing that we've added, the status column. Now, instead of going to the communication log and just saying, okay, it was sent. Now it's up to you, contact, to figure out how to get it in your inbox. Um, your console system is actually... Uh, we've made enhancements and improvements to increase deliverability rates. Um, and that's what, in this status, you can see, um, here's one, here's a message. Does everybody see this? I'll kind of scroll it up here. This particular message says it was delivered. So you know that not only was it successfully sent from your console system, but it actually landed in their inbox. It was successfully delivered as well. And you can see the exact date and time that it was delivered. It's kind of cool, a little bit creepy, but kind of very cool, right? So that particular message was delivered, and you know that this person has not opened it, and they haven't done anything with it, but it has landed in their inbox. Now that is a different, the delivered status, once somebody receives an email from you and they open it, you'll see this one here, is labeled open. That lets you know that not only did it land in their inbox, but they actually opened the email on their machine. Whatever device they opened it on, it doesn't matter, they opened that email. So if they're trying to tell you they didn't get it, you can see right here, well, somebody got it and somebody opened it, right? And it tells you the date and time that they opened it. Now there's another level, and you'll see here the word click under status type, right? The word click is an indicator that inside a, a piece of communication, like an email for an example, inside an email message, um, there was a link that you included and an action that you wanted them to take. So that email message had an action, a link for them, and you wanted them to click on the link to do something. It could have been to take them to a web page, to watch a video, to go to an opt-in form, to be taken to a sales page. Like, Whatever the link is, you inserted the link into that piece of communication and you wanted them to take action. So when it's listed in the email log, and again, right now I'm looking at the emails for just this client in the email log. So this one, for example, it lets me know that there inside this message, there was a link. Not only was it delivered, the person opened it and they clicked on the link. Okay, so those are the different status types. Open, or excuse me, I'll start with delivered. You know it was sent and it's in their inbox. Open, they actually opened it to look at it. Click, there was a link inside that email and they clicked on it to do whatever action it was you wanted them to do. Okay, now I've got a couple questions. Uh, let me just go through here. Uh, let's see, Catherine asks a question. Uh, Catherine says, I see in version two, this client is not subscribed to newsletters. I don't see that on the version three screen. The, even though these are the same accounts, they're from different points in history. So the data is not like, you're not going to see these pieces of communication because I sent this from within the new version. And what the data that you're seeing in version two is, it's a, a different point in time. Right, so it um, don't get hung up on the data matching between the two systems that you're looking at in this training. I think that's what you're describing, okay? Um, and Catherine's question: How do they become a client without subscribing? Well, it's it, it's kind of the opposite. Um, when somebody's a client, 
of yours and they want to unsubscribe, let's say from a newsletter, when, when a contact of yours clicks unsubscribe, in fact, let me, um, let me see if I can pull up an example to show you this. Bear with me. When somebody clicks unsubscribe, um, they can manage their subscriptions. It's not just a blanket unsubscribe, right? So they can manage their subscriptions and they can choose what, um, let's see here. Let me see if I can pull up an email message and an unsubscribe. There we go. Um, Okay, so if somebody gets an email from you, right, here's the email, they opened it, they're looking at it, if I clicked, it's gonna track clicks, but at the bottom of every piece of communication is the unsubscribe footer. You can customize what it says in that footer message, but it has to exist, and there's the unsubscribe link, right? Now, when somebody clicks on that unsubscribe link, it opens a page on your website. Mine's gonna look like this, because this is branded with this training account. And here's Susie Smith. She clicked to unsubscribe. And these are all the things that currently Susie is subscribed to receive from you, the newsletter and some emails. She's not part of any autoresponders, but she does get emails from you because she's your client. And she might say, you know what, that's nice, but I re I'm going on vacation for three months and I'm just not going to clutter up my inbox. I, I, she's got great information, but I'm going to unsubscribe from the newsletter. So she might unsubscribe from the newsletter, but she's because she's your client, she's like, well, I still need to get emails from her. So she can update her uh, subscription or she can just flat out say, unsubscribe me from everything, okay? And so as a client, they, they don't have to be subscribed um, to your communications, okay? Um, okay, let's see, Karen had a question. Oh, Karen just, she has a statement, loving this new feature for communications, excellent, excellent. Um, let's see, Elizabeth has a question. Will this show past emails or just the new emails we send with the new version? It will be from the moment that you make the conversion into version three. And whenever, like whatever day that happens on Elizabeth, it's from that point forward inside version three. It, you will not see any tracking metrics for past former emails because that feature didn't exist when those emails were generated. So it's just from that point forward when you make the conversion um, into uh, version three, okay? Oh, and Larry, huh, Larry just said, please point out that it won't reflect retroactively um, to newsletters sent before 3.0. That's right. Newsletters, emails, autoresponders, any kind of communication, it's only from the moment you convert to 3.0 forward, but then you'll have it on um, that data moving on. Dr. Rashawn asks, uh, what if you have more than one link? Well, actually, let me go show you that. That's what I want to show you next. Um, so let's go back into version three. Now, we're in version three. We're still in the client's file, right? We've clicked on the, cl the client name. We're still under the email log. And what was that called in version two? Communication log, right? So we're still in this. This is still an existing thing. And one of the things, um, you know, you see click. Um, you see delivered, you see open. So these are the, just kind of the broad understandings at a client level. What I want to show you now is the new e email report that's going to give you that information, Dr. Rashawn. So sit tight for one second. I'm about to show you. Okay. In your version three, the last module here is reports. When you click on reports, you're going to see an email report. And you're going to see the tracking. Now this, um, you know, we've just been starting to use this. And you'll see you've, uh, you've got a graph at the, at the top that tracks open rates, the orange line, versus uh, the graph with the blue line, the click rate. So it's always going to be a comparison. So if you like, you know, you can see it on the graph level. Uh, if you're like me, I love numbers. Kate loves pictures. I love numbers. Um, so we have both in here. And so you'll see here's all the communications that I've sent, the communication name. And here's, for example, um, how to get started. And you can see what kind of, e of communication it is, whether it's an email message, a newsletter, uh, if it's part of an autoresponder series. So it'll show you the communication type. And then you're going to have some metrics. This is where I love because I love numbers. Most people most coaches do not love numbers, but I'm telling you, when you understand numbers as mind 
boggling as they can be sometimes, they help you make powerful decisions quickly in your business to get different and better results. So for example, uh, with these, it was sent to 22 people. And you'll notice that each one of these numbers is underscored. And it says, if I hover my mouse over it, it says, see detailed report. I'm going to click on it in just a second and show you that detailed report. But it tells you how many people was this message sent to? What was the open rate? How many people actually opened it? And then how many people, if there was a link included, how many people clicked on that link? So you'll see a couple of zero percents here under the click rate. It, that probably tells me there wasn't a, um, a link to click. If I did have a link to click and I have a zero percent click rate, there's something wrong with my copy and the text in that email that people don't understand they should click. And I need to change the email content that I'm sending out. Uh, but most likely it's going to tell me there wasn't a link to click. But now you'll see under the click rate for these top two messages, 32% of the people that it was sent to clicked. Uh, it also shows bounces. So if somebody has um, a funky email address, you know, when they were signing up with you and maybe they logged into your private client website and they were updating their profile and they were their fingers were typing faster than they could and they... Um, misspelled their name and their email address. It's going to bounce. It's going to say, uh, that email does not exist. You'll get an, a notification weekly about your bounce messages. Like right now, we, we have a whole lot of new people that have just enrolled into boot camp. One of the new boot campers did exactly that. She, We believe we know what her email address is, but we don't want to make an assumption. So we're calling her saying, hey, we think you've entered the wrong email address and we know you're not getting any of our messages, so you're not getting engaged into boot camp. And so we're able to call her and get the right email address, right? So you'll see your bounces or funky emails and then your unsubscribes. And you can see from this particular message, two people unsubscribed. From this message, one person unsubscribed. So you can see for every email you send out, you'll see your unsubscribes. Now let's look at what happens when you click on those detailed reports. So it was sent to 22 people. When you click on the number um, under sent to, it's going to give you a listing of those people. Who are those people? So it's going to give the client name. It's going to give the email address that it was sent to. And it's going to give the status for each one. So this status column is the same thing we were just looking at in the client perspective under email log. For this person, it was delivered. For this person, they clicked. This person, it was delivered. They haven't opened it. This person has opened it, but they didn't click anything. So we can really keep a tab on, look, who's not getting our stuff? We've got several people that it was delivered to that's not getting our stuff. So if you have a group program, let's say you've got a teleclass and, and maybe you've got um, 25 people in your teleclass. If you've got uh, one of the things, I'll let you in on a little secret. This is what we do for boot camp. One of the things that um, Kate and I do is actually let me just hold on a second cindy's telling me that she can't hear me anymore um let me just get a quick chime in from those that are on the webinar with me live just chime in can you hear me is the sound okay fine okay great 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 oh and cindy says i came back on okay good because we're teaching good stuff here i love this stuff um i get wigged out on this stuff can you tell i love it you guys love me for it i know um, so one of the things that we do in our boot camp, and I recommend that you do this if you do teleclasses or you do group programs or trainings, anything where you're working with a, a number of people, Kate and I do the MIA report, missing in action. Now, what we know is that some people will enroll into a program, whether it's boot camp or anything that you offer, and just the act of enrolling they they might take the material and run on their own and you may never see them, but they've got the material, they're devouring it and they're using it. Some people just never show up. One of our boot campers was never on any of the live webinars, right? She had a day job, couldn't make it, but in the background she was doing it. But we like to keep a pulse on our boot campers or on the people in our groups. And so we every week we do an MIA report. Who's missing in action? Where are they? What's happened? Are they okay? Is there any way we can support them to keep people involved and engaged? And so something like this 
especially if it's an email that might deliver homework to a group program you're offering, you can see, okay, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people that have not opened it. Okay, that means seven people have not looked at the homework for this session, which means seven people are not doing the homework for this session, which might be an indicator that they're not engaged or they're overwhelmed or something has come up. And so it's it's an indicator. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's just an indicator. And you can begin to use these detailed reports for things like that, not just who's looking at my stuff for marketing promotions, but actually to kind of begin to to um, help support and keep your participants and clients engaged. Okay, back to the email report. So we did the sent to. Now when we look at the open rate report, uh, we have 68% of the people that opened it. And when we click on that, here's all the people that opened it and the time that they opened it. Right, so you'll be able to see trends. Like in our in our current launch, we are we keep an eye on you know, if we send something out at 10 o'clock in the morning, when are people opening it? And we keep an eye on that because if that's how we actually discovered that one of the most popular times, one of the most effective times to send communications is between 10 and 11 or 2 and 3. Because that's when the most people will open a message. If it's between sent, sent between 6 and 8, you're going to have the least people opening it because they're overwhelmed with all the email, emails in their inbox from when they sit down at their desk. Or if you send it at five o'clock, you have a really low open rate because people are trying to get out the door and they're just like, delete, 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 clear everything out for the next morning, right? And so when you see the times, it kind of helps you to understand trends with your niche and your market. It'll help you better adjust the way you communicate with people and when you communicate with people. You getting the idea here? And then you have the click rate. Um, and Dr. Rashawn was saying, what happens if you have two links in your email? Well, let's take a look at this email first. So here's, um, here's an email in this particular message. There was only one link. So let me click on the click through rate and it shows me here's the link that was included in this particular email message. 32% clicked. That means seven out of all the people that got it and the details. When I click on details, it tells me exactly who clicked and how many times they clicked. So if somebody loves your stuff and they're like, oh my gosh, we had one person download our business of coaching map 44 times. I don't know who she was giving it to. I don't know if I care because that means 44 times people have it, right? And so it's like pretty cool to know that kind of stuff. It's like, yep, that was effective. So that's one link. Now let's look at this message because this message has two links in it. And when you see the click rate and you click on it, it'll show you here's the two different call to action links that we included. Inside this one email, 23% clicked on the first message, but only 18% clicked on the second link. And we can show the details. So for this link, here's the people and how many clicks they made on that same link. And then here's this link that was in the same body of the same email. And when we click details, it's going to show us the names and clicks. Okay. And so on this email report, you'll see the, the graph and it'll give you points in time of whatever, uh, like this is this particular email, your bonus details inside. It was sent to 68 people and, or 68 people opened it and 32 people clicked. So it gives you an overview here. And then you also have your detailed reports here. Okay. Any questions about that? Uh, where do you, Larry just asked, where do you see the email, that the email had two links without remembering it? When I click um, on this click rate, Larry, if I just click on this report, the details, it shows me the detailed report for this and the, the how to get started, like that's the subject of my email message. And it shows me there's two links inside this one email message. And it gives me the click rate for each one and how many clicks were made. And if I click details, then it shows me the people that clicked and who made those clicks. Okay. Any other questions right now? Judy says, so cool. Yeah, we think it's really cool. Um, 
And so you'll, you'll see this when you convert over to version 3, when you send communications from your console system, um, whether it's, it may just be, you know, a one-off email that goes to an individual person. It might be um, an email that you send, like a broadcast that you send to a whole group. Maybe you did an email message for a campaign that you're doing um, and you send it to all of your contacts. Um, it, or it might be a newsletter that you send out or, you know, whatever the communication is, you'll see this report. And again, this is in version three. This level of detail does not exist in version two. But when you make the conversion, it will be there. It will exist. And from that point in time, as you send communications, it'll start tracking the metrics for you. Okay. Okay. Donna um, asked the question, how does the system know how many links are in a given report? Um, do we have to create the document inside Coach's console? How does this, let me, let me just make sure I understand this. How does the system know how many links are in a given report? So uh, what the what the console system is tracking, uh, Donna, is email messages. So, for example, if I go into the Communicate tab, and let's just go in there, and, and I'll just create a quick email. If I create an email and um, uh, prom promo email blast, right, and then you start typing your, um, you know, whatever content, you personalize it. And then here's the look. I can't. You guys know. I, I wish I got to take a class on typing and talking at the same time. I'm sure they offer one. Um, here's the benefits when you join, whatever, and click here to get started. Right. And so you might do a phrase. Uh, you could do a, a phrase. You could do an actual link, but you'll see the hyperlink button in your content editor. Right, so when you highlight whatever phrase you want, people, um, a lot of times you'll see in promotional emails, it'll be like um, uh, bonuses end at midnight, right? And so then this is a highlighted phrase, and so you can hyperlink that, and you can type in the URL uh, if you're sending them to a specific page, or if it's a page within your console system that you want them to go to. Maybe you've created a sales page or a landing page or something. Uh, you can choose a page from your um, that already exists in your console system, or you can just, you know, type in. Um, now, here's a really cool thing. We want to make sure it's an effective link that you type in here. So when you, you see I just did the www. If I just click OK, I'm going to get prompted here uh, because I didn't do that, um, the HTTP prefix, right? So um, it'll add it for you. Just click OK. It adds it. Now this is a live link. So there's one link. And then you might say, um, with pleasure, Melinda, P.S., um, check out these client comments to see for yourself. I don't know, something like that. And this might be a different link. And so we could highlight that phrase or you know something else and, and we could send them to another page. Um, we might have a, you know, a client comments or a testimonials page on our website and we can turn that into a link. And so what that report that we were looking at earlier, it's tracking the content of communication messages. It's not tracking a document. It's not tracking a form. It's not tracking a web page. It's tracking um, communication, right? And so now in this particular email, we have two, um, two links. Click continue. And now you've got a filter. And remember, this is a new little filter. So you can say, I want to send this to all my active clients. And then from there, you can say, but I only want it to go to those active clients that are also in this particular teleclass. So it's going to filter out any active clients that are not part of that group. So you've got some filtering so you can exclude people and only send it to the people that you absolutely want it by. Um, and then you can do a select all, however many contacts it is, and click continue. It's going to give you that confirmation screen like you guys are used to showing you here's all the emails. And you can do a future, um, save it for a future sending date. 
or just send it right now and off it goes. And now this will take a moment before it's sent. And then this will ultimately end up in that email report and it will show that there's two links and you can see who clicked. Okay. So Donna, you, you use the word, um, document. Do we have to create the document inside coaches console? What we're looking at are emails. Okay. Um, and Larry says maybe what she's asking if she can create the document in Word and then import it and will the link still be hot? No. If that's what, if that is what you're asking, if you create a Word document that's a nice, uh, maybe a, a flyer and you put a hyperlink in that document um, and you attach that document in an email, no, it does not track documents within, I mean, it does not track links within a document that are attached to communications. The link has to be actually inside the communication itself. And Donna, if that's, oh, and Donna just said, yes, Larry, that's right. That's what I meant. Great. Thanks, Larry. Um, so that's, that gives you that. Um, so you want to make sure that the links you're creating are to the, um, the actual place you want to go to. And so, you know, Donna, what I would actually recommend is that instead of creating that as a document, you might turn that document into a web page so that your link inside the email takes them to that web page where that document lives or just the content from that document's on a web page. Just do it that way. All right, Sarah asks a question. Um, I have two questions off topic. Um, Sarah, I, yours is about a home study program with PowerPoints and um, teleseminars. Let, I'm going to hold off on your questions just for a second. We are about ready to switch gears, but let me, um, let me ask if there's any more questions on this topic before we move on, and then I'll get to your um, questions, Sarah. So sit tight for one second. Um, thanks so much. Um, okay, Fran has a question. Fran says, um, I stepped away for just a moment. Get back here, Fran. No stepping away. Um, just kidding. Will the new version allow us to select individuals for newsletters the way you can with an email? When you go into a newsletter uh, in version three and you can create a newsletter, I'm just going to create it from a template. There it is. Um, hang on, let me get this out of the way. Save and schedule. Your, um, the newsletter is sent to groups, right? So it's still the same way. That's what makes it a newsletter. An email is designed to go to a person. A newsletter is not designed to go to a person. A newsletter is designed to go to groups of people, um, to mass people. And keep in mind that when you send a newsletter in your Coaches Console website, there's a newsletters page. And as soon as you send a newsletter, that sent newsletter gets archived to that newsletter page and any contact, as long as you have that page displayed on your coach's console system, we pre-configured it for you, it automatically happens, then any contact can go to your newsletter page and see that particular newsletter and its content. But a newsletter is designed to send to groups of people. Emails are designed to send to individuals and or groups. All right. Any other questions about the communication? The um, let's see. Catherine says. All right. Uh, Fran is so having a group named newsletter would help to be organized. Um, if you wanted to, if you wanted to do it that way, you could have a group. And you actually literally name the group newsletter. You could do that. Most newsletters goes to everybody in your list. So when you when you create and send a newsletter, you know you include your active, inactive, hot lead, prospects, and buyers. So everybody on your list gets your newsletter. Usually newsletters go to your whole list. But yeah, you could do that. Uh, and Fran then also asked. So if we um, so then a mass update. If so, then when we mass update contacts to group, Fran, I don't understand that last question. It got kind of jarled. Um, can we mass update? Mass update what? Your group? Your group name? Or I'm not sure what you want to update. Um, 
update, mass update to a group. Sending of the newsletter. You can send a newsletter to the group. Uh, you can certainly do that for sure. If you want to create a group and add many people, if you want to create a group and add many people, um, that's one of the features that we've got coming down the road. It, I don't think it's going to be on when we click over to version three on September 9th, uh, but you will be able to say, here's a new group and I want to add these 40 people to it. Um, yeah, so now I understand what you're saying. Um, but it'll be shortly thereafter if it's not on when we send it. Okay. Um, are there regulations? This is from Leanne. Are there regulation laws for newsletters, like for autoresponders, like a forget? Yeah, it's the spam regulations and laws. They exist for emails, newsletters, autoresponders, any communication that you send from your console system. Uh, you've got to be very careful uh, because here's what happened. If you if you are nonchalant about this and you um, just start sending emails to people and you don't have permission, they are going to report you as spam. And when a num people do that, your whole inbox is shut down. And then you've got to work to get back in the right with the inbox. Now, we do a lot to manage and maintain so that the sending of communications from your console system is good and accurate. And But if you start sending um, trash to people that you aren't don't have permission to send trash to, and um, we start getting alerted on our servers that we have spammers, we will be in touch with you about the kind of content you're sending, right? Because then it'll shut down. Uh, it's We've got to maintain communications, right? So you, all regulations and laws are true for newsletters, autoresponders, emails, whatever kind of communication you do from your console system, from any system, from anywhere, okay? Um, Susie asked, does everything that the Coaches Console Sim have the unsubscribe option on the bottom uh, or somewhere on the form? Yes, it does exist there. You can customize that template, but we have the basic language already there, and it's on every piece of communication. It has to be. So that, that already exists. Um, okay, I think we've got um, a couple of – all right, we've got a couple of um, – Ooh, Leona says, um, is the email service a proprietary coaches console service? Yeah, these newsletters, emails, autoresponders, and all of this that we've created, um, we've, we've done the programming and developing for that. Uh, we take, I can get technical if you want to, but we take, um, it's on a PHP platform and we take some code and we work it. We customize that code to fit within the structure of how the coaches console works and how all the features are integrated. So it is um, a program that we've created. Okay, let's go back to um, Sarah's question. And then I see that a, a few more have some unrelated questions. So now whatever questions you have, just bring them on and we'll go through them one by one. Um, so Sarah, your two questions are this. Number one, I'm creating a do-it-yourself um, program. It's a PowerPoint format with downloadable um, homework PDFs. Are there resources where I can record my voice explaining the content and upload the video field in the course content? Are, or are there other content delivery suggestions? Um, you know, here's what we suggest. If you're doing uh, a home study program, um, I actually use two programs because what you have to do is you have to do a screen capture and an audio capture, right? The coaches console does not do this. We'll house, we'll like, you can stick your recordings in the course and content delivery module. Um, but I use two programs. I'm on a Mac. I don't know what kind of, of um, machine you use. Well, here, I'll just show you. I think they're in here. Yep. Here's the screen record tool. Now I've had this one for years. I don't know if this is still around. I love this little guy. It'll whatever I need to record, it'll record and it records both the video, like whatever I'm showing on my screen, if it's a PowerPoint or if I'm clicking around the system and when I've got my headset in, it also captures the audio. So if I'm making like in the support center, when you guys hear, you know, there might be a, a little 40 second tutorial on a feature or a two minute tutorial, I've used the screen record tool to do that. 
Uh, and then there's this tool, ScreenFlow. Um, now this one, uh, screen record tool was free. ScreenFlow, it cost money, but I got it several years ago. I don't remember what we paid for it. Um, if I have a longer training, like um, a home, if I'm creating a home study program where each session, each PowerPoint that I'm recording is like an hour or 90 minutes or 30, something longer than two or five minutes, I will use this screen, re, uh, screen flow right here because it will capture my screen so I can do um, PowerPoints. There's a pause feature so I can switch screens to then show like the demo if we're doing a demo of a feature. And it also captures my audio. And then I have very detailed capabilities to edit and add effects. It's pretty cool. Um, so that, um, you know, that could be one way that you create it when we do these trainings, um, or the, uh, boot camp trainings, you know, we have, we do a training for a group of people. And so we use go to webinar, but if you're just creating the home study course, uh, you may not have uh, a group of people that are sitting in your classroom going through it with you. And so you could do something like one of those other um, features. And then once we record it, uh, we house that recording on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. And we make them private or unlisted videos in YouTube. So not anybody searching our YouTube channel can see them. But only if um, they've given the link do they have them. Okay. Um, so that's how I would answer that question. I hope that helps. Um, and then the second question Sarah has, has says, uh, I'm planning to conduct a teleseminar October 1st. Um, is that the same as a webinar? Do I need to subscribe to GoToWebinar? And where can I learn more to get this set up by October 1st in 3.0? Should I get started in 2.0 first? Thanks so much. Um, so you're, a teleseminar and a webinar um, are, are different. Usually when people use the word teleseminar, it's just on the phone, just on a call. Um, if you're on a webinar, so it's just voice, it's just audio is all it is. Um, if you're doing a webinar that usually has um, video along with it, like PowerPoint slides, um, screen, you're watching somebody on their computer do something uh, with a webinar. Like what I'm doing today is a webinar because you're seeing me as I'm clicking around demonstrating everything. You're seeing it and you're hearing it, and so that's audio and video. A teleseminar is usually just over the phone, like a bridge line. Um, and so, if you, you know, I would ask you, which one are you doing? Are you going to have audio only or audio and video? And if you're going to do audio and video, then, you know, we've been using GoToWebinar for, oh my gosh, seven, eight years now. I love it. There's a lot of others out there. Um, but if you want to do audio and video, I recommend GoToWebinar. If, if there, um, and, and GoToWebinar has GoToMeeting. So it's for like up to 25 people and it doesn't cost as much. So you could do that. Um, and no, you should go for it in version 3.0 because in version 3.0, the course and the con course and content delivery is actually the same. It works exactly the same here as it does in version two. So definitely get started in version 3.0. Um, oh, and Sarah said it would be a webinar walking them through a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, then I would do go to webinar, um, and I would plan on a few practice rounds because it is it takes a lot getting used to managing the dashboard while also doing the training. I love like Kate and my whole team calls me the webinar queen. Kate would rather not spend any time on a webinar, um, so go through a few practice rounds just to get used to it. Okay, I think that answered your question. And um, let's see, I think Catherine has a question. Where's Catherine's question? Let me go back to that here. Um, here it is. Um, my off topic question begins with, I like that, begins with, uh, show me how to upload the giveaway in version three system and create the emails linked to that. Also, my logo didn't add to the website. Who do I troubleshoot that with? Uh, I don't want to hog the off-topic time. Oh, honey, be greedy. We teach you to be greedy. Be greedy with us. Because what we know is that if you're asking these questions, there's chances our other people listening in have the same questions, or they will. And this is going to help them, too. So no worries about that. Um, so how do you upload your giveaway in version 3 and then link your emails to it? 
Um, let me ask you this, Catherine. Are you using your Coaches Console website uh, for uh, marketing purposes, or do you have an existing website? Which one? Which one are you? Let me know that. Uh, you've got an existing website. Okay, so the way that you would do it is, Catherine, um, in version three, uh, and this uh, this feature, I think this feature is the same as it is in version two, so it's going to be pretty similar. Um, you know, I'm the first thing I'm assuming is that your your free giveaway, whatever it is, a download, a free report, whatever it is, that you've finished it and you've saved it as a PDF, right? You always want to save whatever your download is, save it as a PDF file. Um, that way people can't change it when they receive it and open it. So the first step is under the website module, click on documents, and you are going to upload. You're going to add a document so that that document is living on your console system. we got to get it off your machine and into your console system. And so you would click choose file. You would find that file in your computer, wherever it is. Uh, you would choose a cat. If you categorize your documents, and then you would, you know, title of, um, hang on a second. Wow, that was weird. Hang on. Hmm. Here we go. Title of um, giveaway. But, you know, and you can have some fun formatting or whatever. I'm just going to do the title and whatever. And so you click save. And that is going to upload that giveaway to your console system. Okay, so it's a PDF. Great. Um, so once you get that uploaded, you'll see that it's uploaded. Like here's an example, you know, free gift, whatever that PDF is, you'll see it listed here. And then for you, because you have an existing website, um, under still under the website module, you're going to go to custom opt-in forms. And on custom opt-in forms, when you create, um, here, let me just, We'll just work on this one, this free gift. There's a wizard here, and you'll see four sections in this wizard. Because when somebody opts in, there's multiple things integrated that makes that work. First, it's, uh, well, it's the name of your opt-in form, because whatever name that opt-in form is, um, people that opt in are going to automatically be put in that group. That way you know where people came from, and you can see how many people have opted into my free gift. Uh, so they got to be assigned to a free gift. So that's the first step in the wizard. The second step is once somebody enters their name and email and um, clicks subscribe or download or whatever you call the opt-in button, when they click that button, um, they're going to start receiving a series of messages. Right? And so you can add some messages. Here's add message. And you can set, you know, zero days delayed as promised. Here you go. Um, click here to download. And then when you click on that in the first autoresponder message, you can type in. A, now, you know, you guys, I'm not creating the full entire content. You guys get that. I'm just showing you the essence of it here. Um, but when you click and highlight the phrase, click here to download, again, you can go to that hyperlink icon, insert edit link. Under the link list, because you've already uploaded that free gift into your console system, Scroll down past the web pages in your console system and past the forms, and you'll get to documents. And here's your documents. And so here's, let's just say that this is our free gift. And so now, right in the body of the email, you can give them a link to download that actual document, right? And it's sent immediately, and you can have as many messages, just keep adding messages in the sequence to, that deliver the opt-in responders. And then once somebody um, opts in and they start receiving these messages, they also see on their screen a thank you page. Thank you for saying yes to this. Check your inbox. That's always a good statement to make. Um, and here's your download. You can also give them their download um, or check this out. And you could insert a video on this thank you page. Right. We do that a lot. We have a little video where I made a video and said, oh, my gosh, you just downloaded this. I'm so super happy. And you can go get it right away. It's in your inbox. And hang on a second because we've got a training. Like, right. So you can make a little video and insert the video. And so you can have a series of autumn responders and a thank you page. And then the last step in this custom opt-in form is the code. So, you know, for those of you that are using Coaches Console, you can 
here's some instructions on how to insert this opt-in form on your console site. Or Catherine, you have an existing site, so you would click the code, click and it highlights the code and it's a simple copy. Go into your existing website or give this to your um, website designer and insert that code wherever you want that form to appear. Okay. Uh, Catherine says, can these messages be copied over from the ones you have pre-made? Uh, the ones you have pre-made, if you have them pre-made in your um, console system, um, where, well, where, however you have them pre-made, it would be a copy-paste, right? So you would copy and paste wherever you have them pre-set up in a document somewhere, or you would just copy and paste them into the body of each message that you want to set up. Uh, because then you want to format it because it's a web-based system and because you want to make sure that people on any device, on any browser can view it, you want to format that message inside your, your content editor of your autoresponders. Uh, Dr. Rashawn says, can I use HTML or CCS? Yeah, in the content editor. Um, Let's just go there for a second. You know, in the content editor, you have the ability if, you know, if you want to get crazy with source code and all that, you can certainly do that. Most of us don't like that, but if you want to, it's there. Um, Larry says, is that link list new? No, it's not. It's been my favorite feature forever, and you better know that. Um, Larry says, how can you create it? Um, how can you access that link list from other places not creating an autoresponder. Larry, wherever you are in your system, whether it's newsletters, emails, a web page, um, a client log, anywhere where you're typing communications, typing content, and you see the content editor, whenever you see the content editor, whenever you see the insert edit link icon, you will see, you will always see the link list. Sometimes you might know the URL and you just type it in. But if it's something from your console system, you will always see that this is a version two thing and it's a version three thing. And you can click and here's all the pages that you've created in your console system, all the forms. You can do direct links to any form or any documents. That's why I love that little feature. OK. Um, let's see. Hang on. Catherine also says, also, um, you also recommend we embed a link for if you're ready to book a session into the document, how do we do this? Um, you know, the reason that we say that into the actual download document and the free gift itself, the very last thing is that call to action and then your bio. And, you know, some people will print your free gift. They won't just look at it on the machine. They'll actually print it, make notes, highlight it, keep it, that kind of thing. Um, and so you just want it, it's just visible in that kind of case where they're like, oh, let me go to, and, and they'll go to their browser and type it in. Some people will open your free gift right on the, um, right on their computer and they'll just read it on their computer. And at that point inside that document, that PDF document of your free gift, if you typed in your calendar link, then it's a live link and they can click right from that document to go to your calendar. Or like in the... Um, emails, PS, click here to schedule. And you can use that um, link list to do a quick shortcut to your calendar. Okay. Okay, so I think that answered your questions, Catherine. We are right at the top of the hour. Um, I'm going to sneak one more in. Where did it go? Um, Sarah said, oh, yep, that answered her questions and was valuable information. Gives me direction to pursue. Great. Um, Elizabeth says, I'm designing a membership site and curious if other coaches console users have done this. And if so, what resources did they use to set it up? You know what? Um, that's a great place, Elizabeth, to head over to coaches console members mastermind and ask folks what they do there. What we do uh, we spend a lot of time and money researching membership sites, and what we found to actually be the most effective is to do private pages for content and then a private Facebook group or a closed Facebook group. That was the two things. So, you know, there's a lot of great membership sites out there. Um, we recommend using the course and content delivery for the private and secured pages and all the content that your participants are going to access. 
and then um, to set up a, a private Facebook group because so many people are so used to it. So we actually were ready to invest in developing a, a membership forum um, for you in the console system. And after a lot of time, money, and research, we learned that that's not the way to do it. So we didn't. Um, but head over to Coaches Console Members Mastermind, and uh, you'll see it there. Okay. Um, Leanne asked a or no, Kimberly asked a question. This was about the unsubscribe footer. If you are still with us, Kimberly, the way you do that is under my account. So, for example, when you're on the dashboard and you see my account, one of the sections under my account are notification templates. This is more of an advanced feature, so it's kind of hidden in your account settings. But when you click on notifications, you can see the unsubscribe communication footer. You'll see the preset default information. Um, and you've got replacement tags, so you can personalize it if you want to. Um, you can make it say whatever you've got, and then you've got to include the please click the unsubscribe link replacement tag. And then just click save. Okay, okay let's see if we can sync another one in. Uh, <laughs> did we get everybody's? How can I connect my website to Coach's Console? Okay, really quickly, I'm going to show you this, uh, Leona. So, um, for example, let me just go to Val. I'm going to open up one real quick for you. So here's Val. And she. the first thing you would have to do, Leona, is you would need to add um, a menu. This is Val's existing website. She, she does not use this with Coach's Console. So you want to add a menu called Client Login. And that menu, let me go back, that menu um, see this menu in the upper right? Client login. That menu has a hyperlink to Val's Coaches Console website URL. So when people click on it, they go to her Coaches Console website. So the first step, Leona, is to add a menu called something like Client Login. And then when you're in your console system under Website, under Settings, that's where you'll always find your Coaches Console URL. Highlight this, copy this. Turn that new menu into a hyperlink pointing to this URL, and your websites are linked. It's that simple. Okay. If you have any questions, you can head to the support center. Um, okay, Catherine says, last item, logo tech help. Uh, the best way to do that, a lot of times it's because of a sizing thing. Um, Catherine, head over to the support center, um, and you, know, you can click on this blue question mark, or here's customer support in the upper right. And I would submit a ticket, submit a request, and upload your file and say, hey, gang, I'm trying to upload it. It won't work. What's going on? Sometimes it's the name of your file. If you have any spaces in your file name, it might be funky. So check your file name first. And if you have any spaces, like Catherine's Best logo, and there's spaces in between that, um, in the blank spaces, use dashes or underscores. So there's no blank spaces. And if that still doesn't work, head over to support. Upload the file you're trying to get in your console system, and they'll take a look at it and let you know. Okay, now we really are. We're four minutes over, and thank you, everybody, for sticking around so we can answer those last few questions. And uh, like I just mentioned, when you're in your console system, whether you're in version 2 or version 3, you always have customer support, and uh, you've got the video tutorials. In fact, you'll now see that the support center is different. Yeah, go check it out, baby. Um, you're going to see here are the version two. If you're still in version two, this is what you're going to use. If you have made the conversion, if you're in boot camp or you're in our first batch rollout that's coming up or you're part of our betas, here's your version three guide and video tutorials and frequently asked questions. And then here's resources common for everybody, whether it's the archives of these weekly Tuesdays at two calls for all console members. It's our um, Coaches Console Facebook group for all Coaches Console members. And then this is a new place. I'll let you go check this out. We've recently had eight new certified VAs that are proficient at Coaches Console. If you want to go check them out, you'll see the certified marketplace there. It gives you an idea about what it is. And when you scroll down, you'll see a table and you can meet all the VAs. And uh, you can listen to a little personal statement from them. And you can check out how they might be able to help you. Um, so a lot of fun stuff in the support center. So thank you everybody. And, uh, we'll see you on the Facebook group and then we'll see you here again next week for another great topic. All right, everybody. Bye for now.